the wrist on the forehand plays a massive role in producing topspin, but also helping you have that direction and that accuracy when you're hitting the forehand. But should your wrist be very firm or should it be as loose as you can be? Now, when it comes to the forehand, relaxation is key in producing effortless power. If I'm very stiff, if I'm very tight all the way through the swing and I start muscling the ball, yes, I may hit one or two good shots, but ultimately over the course of a match, I'm going to get exhausted and I'm going to end up injuring either the wrist, the elbow or the shoulder. Having said that, what I want to avoid doing is during the point of contact, having my wrist too loose when I end up snapping at the ball. This will make me lose control over that shot and I won't be able to produce that topspin. Now, during the preparation phase, a very good method to actually keep the wrist relaxed, but still in a very good position is to ensure that your non-hitting hand, this is my left hand for the right handers out there, is holding either the throat of the racket or the top of the grip. Now, what this will aid is in that preparation phase, the racket head can be higher than the grip level and actually the wrist can be cocked back slightly. Now, I'm not forcing the wrist to go back into this position and holding it here simply with the muscles of the forearm, but I'm allowing it to happen by having a loose wrist and a relaxed hand. So by holding the racket like this, this hand can be extremely relaxed. I don't feel any tension in my wrist here, but it's in a very good position. This will actually aid the racket lag phase later on in the swing. So having the racket in this position when you start your forehand will actually help you to have a relaxed wrist in an ideal position. Now from here, once I reach the power position, once I separate the hands and it goes into this back position, the wrist can still be very relaxed. because the rack ahead is above the grip level. I'm not level like this. So in the power position, if I reach this position here, now the racket weight is being supported by my wrist and the forearm muscles, making it stiffer, making it tighter. By lifting the racket now, I don't feel any tension in my wrist when I'm holding the racket like this. So by having the racket head above the grip level, it actually aids me to still stay relaxed in that wrist and in the forearm muscles. Now from the power position, what happens is the body starts to uncoil and we can use the ground force at the same time. So I'm using the legs to drive and I'm opening up the shoulders and the hips with that uncoiling motion. So I'm coiling in the preparation phase and I'm uncoiling as I go towards that point of contact. Now, when this happens, if your wrist is stiff and your wrist is tight, it will be very hard for you to achieve good racket lag. Now, racket lag basically means the racket head is lagging behind the hand and the grip of the racket. So I'm in this position here prior to contact. It's almost as if the bottom of the racket is going to hit that oncoming ball. And we'll see this with all the best forehands in the world. they achieve this position. It's not happening by them forcing it. It's not happening by them being extremely stiff and getting into this slot because then they'll get injured, but it's happening by having a relaxed wrist and using the right mechanics on that swing. So in this position, I'm still very relaxed with the wrist. I feel no tension when I'm hitting my forehand. because at the start of the swing, I'm setting myself up extremely well for the entire swing, simply by holding the racket with my non-hitting hand. This allows me to then hold the weight of the racket, support the weight of the racket with my left hand, and this allows the right hand to then stay relaxed. Once I reach that power position, I then have the uncoiling, then I have the racket lag. Now at the point of contact, your wrist will be cocked back. This doesn't mean that I'm forcing the wrist to be in that position and holding it stiff or holding it tight. 
It simply means that because of the relaxation and because of the mechanics of the swing, the wrist has laid back naturally and I'm allowing the racket to make contact with my wrist in this firm position. But the wrist is being supported by the arm and of course the body, regardless of the arm position. I may use an extended arm like Federer and I can hit the ball much further in front or I may use a bent elbow and hit the ball slightly closer to me but the wrist is still cocked back in this position and I'm making contact out in front of the body. Now when I make contact in front, I have the entire body supporting the rack ahead. Now after the point of contact, I have two main options on that follow through. Number one is the windshield wiper. And from this contact point, what happens is the forearm will start to pronate over. So the rack ahead will go from this dropped position, rack ahead being down to rack ahead being up. Now, as you can see, this is producing that low to high swing path, which will aid in the top spin production, but also in that net clearance and giving ourselves more margin over the net. So I'm in this position when I make contact and the forearm now starts to pronate. If you think about on the serve, that pronation occurs prior to contact. Now on the forehand, what happens is we have that supination happening during the racket lag phase. So I'm supinated now in this position and at the point of contact, that's when I start that pronation with the forearm. So it basically goes from a palm open to the sky position to a palm then turning towards the left side of the court until eventually it reaches the ground position. Now at the same time that the pronation is occurring in the forearm, I'm also allowing the wrist to go from this cocked back position into a neutral position. So I'm not allowing it to snap all the way through because then that increases the stress on my wrist, but I'm allowing it to go from this cock back position at the point of contact until it reaches that neutral position. Usually this occurs during that racket down position to the racket up position. So as you can see from here, contact point, pronations occurring and at the same time the wrist has gone back into a neutral position. So it's here to here. Now I'm not forcing this with the snap of my wrist. I'm not doing this with my wrist. I'm allowing it to just happen naturally by having the racket go from this position into this position. Now if I don't allow the wrist to actually come through and go into that neutral position, it's going to end up looking like this. Contact point, pronation and the wrist is still cocked back. As you can see, it looks very awkward and it doesn't look natural. And also the amount of pressure that I'm putting on my wrist by forcing the wrist to stay in this position is going to lead to injury. Now, if I'm going for a flatter shot, the wrist can do a slightly different job. From the point of contact, I want to stay on that ball for longer and the wrist can actually go forward So I'm allowing the wrist to go from this cock back position into more of a neutral position, but I'm not pronating at the same time. I'm heading through that ball. So I'm staying on the ball for as long as I can. And only when I actually reach that maximum position where the racket has gone as far as it can, now I'm going to allow the forearm to then pronate fully. So it's contact point, hit through that ball, and then allow the pronation to happen. So if we're going for more topspin, the pronation can happen much quicker. If we're going for that flatter shot, it can happen much later in that strike zone. So it's a relaxed wrist, as relaxed as we can be, because this will actually help us to hit with more power. Because if you think about having a tight muscle, a stiff muscle versus a loose muscle, which one will produce more power? If I'm throwing a punch and I'm throwing the punch like this, look how stiff that looks. If I'm throwing it relaxed and using the body to rotate at the same time, then the punch will have some real power behind it. The same in tennis. We want to be as loose as we can be with the hands and with the wrist, but the body is working hard to produce that racket head speed and I'm allowing the mechanics to take over. 
So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I hope you'll start using your wrist properly on your forehand. Now, if you want more help with your forehand, we have a free forehand guide that you can download right away. I'll leave the link beneath this video. Now, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on that notification bell. If there are any lessons you'd like to see from us in the near future, leave a comment down below and we'll film the top suggestions. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT. All the best and see you soon, guys. Take care.